Hi everyone, I'm Ronan Unchained. Usually I don't do theory videos that often. Anything, any theories or points of views that I might think a storyline might go in a movie or show, I tend to do it on a review or in a round table with other friends and whatnot. But it's concerning Ahsoka, the show that's been run by Dave Filoni that will be have a presence at Star Wars Celebration next week. And I'm traveling to London and I'm like, you know what? I wanna just get my theories and, and my thoughts out of the way and then see how it looks compared to the after the panel at Celebration and see if anything lines up or if I'm just going Cocoa for Cocoa Puffs. And, um, but I'm confident that some stuff might line up with what I'm thinking. Check this out. Take a look at this. My big thing is when it was announced that Ahsoka is going to get her own spin-off show after her success in her live action debut in The Mandalorian Season 2, which was directed by and written by Dave Filoni. The prologue, it's Sabine and Ahsoka trying to go find Ezra. And I think that's going to be a huge, huge part of what that story is. But at a Q&A, uh, Donald Faison, I believe. Uh, hi. I have a question. My name is Donald Faze. I'm a huge fan of Star Wars. Uh, Hi. Hi. Oh, hey, what's up, man? What's happening, man? Um, so, how soon can we expect the Sabine Wren uh, Ahsoka Tana show? <laughs> Into the bathroom, so I don't know if you announced it already or but I came back and you didn't talk about it when I came back, so I'm asking now. Why would you watch that show? I'm a, I think everybody was on it okay. And is that is that in the works? Is it something that you talked about? Is it something that's going to happen or was just or was that just a tease for us to, you know, wish for uh, you know, yeah, yeah. to never happen. What's up? I don't know. You don't know? I do know. You do know? I do know. Obviously, it's intriguing. Um, it would probably make a good story. Man, that'd be a good idea. I have this crazy thing. I have to know what the story is about before I tell it. I actually have to. You have know what it's about? They're looking for Ezra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We go find Ezra, right? No, no, no. No, no, no. It's to be more than that. It's to be more than that. So we'll see. I love it. It's so clear to you. Let's talk later. We'll get to go brainstorm. You, you and I. <laughs> You're so excited about it. That's so great. So yes, the obvious is like we got to continue on what Rebels concluded. But why are we focusing on Ahsoka now? After Clone Wars, after Rebels, after Mandalorian, after her own books, why are we still focusing on Ahsoka? Interesting, interesting, interesting. And I think it has to do with, okay, she left the Jedi Order. She doesn't consider herself a Jedi, but she still cherishes and uh, believes in the ideas of what the Jedi should be for the galaxy. And now she came close to dying in Rebels and was given a second chance via thanks to Ezra. What do you do now that after the civil war that split the world and family you grew up on has concluded? What now? What do you do? How do you, how are you of service or are you not in service? Are you now more fulfilling about yourself and your own personal life? Whether it be individual or communal, I think Ahsoka is gonna go deep into the more mysticism into the force. Whether that sends her into the unknown regions or other parts that we haven't seen yet in the galaxy. And I wouldn't be surprised if we bring up what happened after she says, may the force be with you, Ezra Bitcher, and goes into the deeps of that cave on Malachor, if you will. And to when we see her in the epilogue of Rebels, when she meets up with Sabine again, it's like, all right, there's a time jump towards the end after Return of the Jedi. What was she doing in between? While Luke, Khan, and Leia were doing their thing, what was Ahsoka doing? And what was, you know, the rest of the crew of the Rebels doing? So I would be fascinating if we looked into what she was doing in that meantime. Or just that, okay, now she's going to go way more into the mysticism and probably elevate herself to a whole new level. That maybe the likes of Qui-Gon Jinn have done before her. I find that fascinating because Filoni has said that this is going to go full on more samurai Akira Kurosawa feel for a show which I I am pumped as hell. If we get more of what we got from her episode in The Mandalorian, ooh, we are in for a treat, folks. I think she won't be alone in her journey. I do think that Sabine Wren is gonna be sort of the co-star of this show, which Natasha Lou Bordiso has been cast as her. And I, they're gonna go on a road trip around the galaxy 
And in the process, they're going to be interacting with different individuals and just creating whole new experiences for each, each other. But I want to bring up that character again because Sabine and Ahsoka have a lot of similarities and a lot of differences from one another. Both have been casted aside from their families. Ahsoka with the Jedi Order, Sabine with Clan Ren. Once they were casted out, they went in completely different directions. One went on her own and did her thing. Sabine found a new family. They took her in and Kane and Jairus and Harrison Dula eventually became her adopted father and mother. I like the fact that um, one became Fulcrum and one became a daughter. I, I like that, that, that distinctiveness. They have similar goals going into this show. Ahsoka, as I said before, she lost her family, friends, home that she lived and grew up by. Her cast out, cast out the war, everything. She can't get back to that. But can she make the Ghost Crew that family whole again? After the war, is there any room to still do any good? What I liked about that is that Sabine is also in her in individual mission. Ezra tells her, I'm counting on you. So will the sister keep her promise? If so, what, what's, what's the possibilities afterwards? Is she gonna follow in Hera's footsteps and join the New Republic and become a ranger, if you will, or, or you know, someone that, that's high ranking, that does good? Another cool similarity is that for me, Ahsoka and Anakin were always brothers and sisters. Now, I like to think that like, all right, she can't save her brother, Anakin. By her point of view, maybe she doesn't know that he's turned, he went back to the light side, that he did bring balance to the force. But she can help Sabine find her brother her, her lost brother again and another thing is that like i i do believe i don't know what feloni has up his cards about ezra bridger he's far far away ah. but one way or another alive or dead he should come back home should and must come back home to his family and you know what as, as a little nugget for cameo for us fans of rebels i'd be it'd be cool if both morgan elsbeth comes into play with what she knows about Grand Admiral Thrawn. And what if Ketsu Onyo uh, comes back to help Sabine Wren in some way? Filoni must have told his cast and crew that look at these films as references to what we're aiming to do with the show of Ahsoka. I think there's a couple films you can throw out. In terms of main direction and, and style, I think it's Akira Kurosawa with all his samurai movies. I could be wrong, folks. Again, if I'm wrong, oh well. I'm not gonna lose sleep over it. But if I'm right, uh, shoot. I got some points on me as a nerd. I think that Filoni told them to watch John Ford's The Searchers, Lady Snowblood, and George Miller's Mad Max Fury Road. If you look at The Searchers, it's all about finding a child and bringing them home. And for the majority of the film, you just follow two characters. You follow John Wayne and Jeffrey Hunter. And it spans over years, a good time. And you see how they come to bond, even though very complete different people with different ideologies and ways of behaving with one another they they come to to uh, some sort of connection while fulfilling a mission mr filoni if you ever watch this i doubt it uh i think the ending of the searchers you should do for ahsoka in terms of what that relates to ezra bridger and the ghost crew family if you do it shot for shot i will be a happy camper and um, yeah, I, I feel you should do that as well. Have people who are helping you find Ezra Bridger. You bring back Captain Rex, you bring back Hondo Onaka, and uh, other allies. Lady Snowblood, I bring that up just because it's a badass female assassin who's trying to avenge her family from the people who've wronged her, who just happen to be part of the Japanese government and the mafia. And um, yeah, I would think that like, you know, Rosario, like look at that as well. Look at look at what Lady Snowblood did. And uh, Mad Max Fury Road, because like again, a road trip. We're gonna we're, we're most likely gonna go to the unknown regions, still go tra traverse the outer rims, not be too much into the, the, the core worlds or the core rim, if you will. And um, again, it's a similar, these movies are also similar. Like Mad Max, you're following Max and Furiosa, trying to do good by the girls that, uh, um, uh, Morton Joe wants as their property and Dave I trust I hope you folks uh, enjoyed this uh, th mini theory if you will video I don't know I've, I've, I've benching when I'm just theorizing I just I wrote all this stuff down before uh, or after the Soka footage came out of last year's celebration I've just been thinking about what is this show about what are they gonna do blah, 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 blah. Um, and we shall see only time will tell Thank you so much for uh, checking this out. If you bothered doing it, may the, force, may the force be with you. And this is the way.